What are you afraid of? There's things that sleep in the day and hunt at night. Hey guys, here's another video on the third big surprise. It's related to the Night King. We're going to review three scenes from the show, and I'll highlight a subtle but very, very important clue that no one's talking about. First scene, we've got this chat between Osha and Maester Lewin, which differentiates them. Osha knows the truth about the giants and the children and the others because she's from north of the wall. They've been gone for thousands of years. They wasn't gone, old man. They were sleeping. Whereas Maester Lewin is now of Winterfell. And we know from Bran's final chapter in the books that Bran's purpose is to learn truths forgotten now in Winterfell. So Osha remembers. The North remembers. They met on a small isle in the center of a great lake called the God's Eye. It was there they forged the pact. Whereas Winterfell forgets because... We've never been down south. I've been to Winterfell. That's the north. That scene is not in the books, but similar dialogue occurs in a scene that we're going to go over. The second scene is this one. Maester Lewin chatting with Bran about magic and the children of the forest. The show actually combined two chats from the books. These are dreams, Bran. Nothing more. And the third scene is this one. where Bran goes down into the crypts because he had had dreams of his dead father there. He told me to come with him, so I did. We went down into the crypts. My father was there. Your father's not down there, little lord. You both miss him. It's only natural he should be in your thoughts and dreams. But that doesn't mean that... Bran... Then, a raven arrives, confirming that some dreams are, in fact, more than just dreams. Real quick, thank you to my friends Eduardo and Milady Elena for helping us raise money for the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania to save a child's life. All right, let's layer in the book stuff. The chapter starts out with Bran watching young men and children train to man the walls since Lord Eddard took the cream of his guard to King's Landing and when Robb Stark would leave Winterfell, he took the rest of the men, including the best men for leagues around. Meanwhile, Maester Lewin gazes at the comet. Brandon Lewin then chat about Simeon Star-Eyes, a legend who, it's worth noting, supposedly saw hellhounds fighting at the Night Fort back in the day, probably the Night's King and his brother. Then Bran asked to get brought down into the crypts, because he had had that dream that his father was down there, and in that dream, Ned was sad, and it had something to do with John. He doesn't know what it is, but he's sad because of John. So Bran wanted to go down into the crypts, but Hodor would not bring Bran down there because Hodor was too scared. Mr. Lewin tells Bran that his father's not going to be there anyway. His father's down in King's Landing. Little does he know, Ned is dead. So Osha takes Bran down into the crypts, where they see statues of the various kings of winter and of Lyanna, a nod to Bran's recollection that we just spoke about a minute ago, how Ned was sad in the dream and it had something to do with John. Out of nowhere, Shaggy Dog attacks and he bites Maester Lewin. This doesn't happen in the show because Maester Lewin isn't down in the crypts, but it's an important scene from the books because they head up to the Maester's turret where Osha helps to clean and bandage his wounds. As she does this, Maester Lewin says how dreams are only dreams and the children of the forest are dead and gone. Then Bran mentions old man stories about warging, but Lewin says that all of this was done with magic, which is gone. However, he wishes that the children were there with them because a spell would heal his arm less painfully. And then he goes off on a big tangent about dragonglass. He gives Bran and Rickon some dragonglass arrowheads and describes how the children use them, at least to the best of his knowledge. There's a lot of stuff in there that we're going to go over tomorrow, but the point of this video is this part right here. Maester Lewin is being healed by Osha, and as she heals him, he mentions the healing powers of the children. Then he pivots into a discussion about dragonglass. So he doesn't specifically mention that dragonglass has healing powers, but there's a subtle connection there. And here's a refresher about green dragonglass and healing. First off, dragonglass is also referred to as frozen fire. Frozen, ice, and fire, fire. Yet another symbolic song of ice and fire, dragonglass, frozen fire. And as Lord Beric once said, fire consumes, it consumes, and when it is done, there is nothing left, nothing. The inverse assumption implies that fire consumes, but ice preserves, so in a way, the Black Dragonglass is healing the Night King in perpetuity. So that's what Black Dragonglass does. But what about Green Dragonglass? Remember, Stannis told Sam in the books that on Dragonstone, the great part of it was black, but there was some green as well, some red, even purple. Dragonglass. What the Maesters call Obsidian. You know what it is. We have it in Dragonstone. 
but this is the only time that different color dragon glass is mentioned in the books, just this one time. And in the show, it's the same thing. They revealed green dragon glass just one time at Hard Home, and John reaches for it, but he gets pulled away. He doesn't get it. So why would they show this to us? Because it's Chekhov's gun. We will see green dragon glass again, and they're going to use it to heal the Night King. Violence is a disease. You don't cure a disease by spreading it to more people. So the reason they showed us this scene is so that when they heal the Night King with green dragon glass, people don't complain about Deus Ex Machina. It's there, it's in our faces, but everyone's just ignoring it. Check out the Green Dragonglass video if you want more details, but in short, this book here also alludes to Dragonglass having healing properties. It includes the word Dragonglass and the word Cure. And Dragonglass was not one of the ingredients used to heal Sir Jorah, so check off gun number two. We've got a lot more to go over within just this one legendary book scene, but the point of this one is simple. Maester Aemon spoke about magical healing and Dragonglass while he was being healed. So the children of the forest are all dead, but Samuel Tarly, as an homage to Samwise Ganji from Lord of the Rings, is going to be the final hero. Sam the Slayer is going to heal the Night King and in effect, save the children of tomorrow. Killed him. He turned them all. You don't understand. Including this little guy, little Sam's half-brother, and all of their other half-brothers. I'm told you killed a white walker. Did you, Grace? Oh, with a dagger made of dragon glass. I always wanted to be a wizard. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm serious. <laughs> so you'll stay and say your word with me.